Thank you. I'm from the Department of Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery of Agostino Gemelli Hospital in Rome. And this presentation aims to share with you our experience with the ultra high frequency ultrasound applied to lymphatic super microsurgery that is becoming that is something becoming bigger and bigger than what we expected at first. And that is attracting the eyes of the whole world of plastic reconstructive super microsurgery. Just a few words to introduce you to the field of our application. Lymphedema is a chronic, progressive, and debilitating disease characterized by the swelling, uh, a progressive swelling of soft tissues, mainly but not only involving upper and inferior limbs. And um, with the advancements of cancer treatments and the um, um, long standing complications of, of cancer survivors are becoming a major issue, and lymphedema is considered one of the most important because of its chronic ne uh, nature, because it's progressive, and because patients require a uh, lifelong conservative treatment. The treatment of lymphedema can be both conservative, as the well known um, physical decongestive therapy, but also surgical, and in particular, Surgical techniques are required when the um, conservative treatments are become ineffective in controlling the edema changing of the limbs. And among all the surgical techniques, the lymphatic venal anastomosis are an effective and minimally invasive surgical procedure that allows that are um, that um, are therapeutic for obstructive lymphedema that is refractory to conservative decongestive therapy. The lymphatic venal anastomosis, or, or as we call LVA, aims to create as many lymph drainage pathways as possible while preserving the spontaneous lymph drainage of the limbs. And up to now, or up to a few years ago, the um, detection of lymphatic vessels in the preoperative planning of LVA was performed only with endocene and green lymphography, that is, an minimally invasive imaging techniques that allows to um, evaluate the severity of lymphedema to detect the anatomical location of the lymphatic vessels so that you can plan where to perform the incision. But there are some limitations, especially the fact that um, you cannot see lymphatic vessels if they are masked under dermal backflow patterns such as in stardust and diffuse patterns as you can find in advanced lymphedema patients or you can it requires an injection that cannot be performed in uh, iodine allergy patients and to overcome all these limitations in 2015 the group of Tokyo headed by Professor Koshima and particularly with the name of Dr. Ayashi suggested for the first time the possibility of detecting lymphatic vessels in um, dermal backflow areas or in uh, iodine allergy patients with ultrasound. And this is the first attempt to do this, and this is the first time that the um, ultrasound characteristics of lymphatic vessels are defined. So lymphatic vessels showed for the first time has an intermittent hyperchoic, um, irregular, misshapen image that, of course, do not color on color Doppler mode and um, do not have convergences with artery veins and nerves. So um, differently from a nerve, a superficial nerve that appears as a unique, um, unique fascicle with an oval shape or different from a vessels that of, of, um, of, from vessels that of course color in color Doppler mode and have a really round and perfect shape. Well, so what we now call the conventional high frequency ultrasound showed actually have higher possibility of detection of lymphatic vessel where it was impossible for the high CG lymphography. And there was in advance the fact that for the first time we were able to put in relationship the lymphatic vessels with the skin and surrounding tissues that is extremely useful during the anatomic dissection of these structures that you have to think that um, the, medium size, the medium size of the lymphatic vessels that we use for an LVA is 0 0.3 millimeters. Um, of course, as you can see from the pictures I showed, um, this detection with the conventional ultrasound was extremely hard and highly operator dependent. 
and above everything, it's almost impossible to evaluate the functional status of the, of the lymphatic vessels. This is, this is particularly significant because lymphatic vessels become sclerotic over time after lymph flow obstruction, and they lose the infection of draining lymph flow from limbs. That's why anastomosing a sclerotic lymphatic vessels has a minimal therapeutic effect. So either the identification of a functional lymphatic vessel is essential, and this has become possible just with the introduction of ultra-high-frequency ultrasound. This is a paper that we published in collaboration with the group of Tokyo in which, for the first time, the detection of lymphatic vessels for preoperative planning of LVA is performed by ultra-frequency ultrasound that actually show to have higher sensitivity, higher specificity if compared with conventional ultrasound. We found um, smaller lymphatic vessels in a larger number and unprecedented clear images, even <coughs> when they were smaller than 0 0.3 millimeters. That was our cutoff up to before the introduction of this exam. And above all, we found new characteristics and imaging findings that directly relate to the evaluation of the functional status of the lymphatic vessels. In this picture, you have on the left side in picture A, an image taken with the conventional ultrasound and the same picture with the ultra high frequency ultrasound. Here you see two lymphatic vessels pointed by the yellow arrow and the glycophenous vein pointed by the blue arrow. You, have, you can see the difference from the two lymphatic vessels see in the ultra high frequency ultrasound. You can even identify the difference. You can, the relationship between the lumen and the wall thickness of the vessels in this other picture is hard even just to understand that these are lymphatic vessels. This is another similar picture in which you can see the difference between an infective vessel, an infective vessel pointed in uh, yellow, uh, the most famous vein pointed in blue, and the sural nerve pointed in red. Here is hard just to distinguish if we, which one is the infective vessel and which one is the saphenous nerve. Here you can clearly see all the fascicles of the nerve and the infective vessels that is clearly different from the vein. In this picture, you can see some of the dynamic modifications that we use to evaluate the functional status of lymphatic vessels. Here, you have a very small lymphatic vessel. We are talking about 0 0.2 millimeters in diameter. The great saphenous vein and the saphenous nerve. And here, you can see how um, the lymphatic vessels do not color in color doppler mode, of course, and the vein becomes blue. And here, you can see that by pushing the transducer against the skin, the vein collapses, so you cannot see anymore the main, while the lymphatic vessel is, that is less likely to collapse. And we actually observe that they expand when the transducer is pushed against the skin. A similar picture, but taken in the forearm, so you have a small lymphatic vessel, the cephalic vein, the lymphatic vessel is not, the lymphatic vessel not colored in the colored upper mode, and the lymphatic vessel that is expanded while the cephalic vein is collapsed by pushing the transducer on the skin. This is a video uh, to show you the difference in the behavior of the vein and lymphatic vessel and how we understand that this is a functional lymphatic vessel. I don't know if, yeah. You can see by pushing the transducer, the vein collapses and the lymphatic vessel just stay and it expands. Another video where maybe this is more visible. So look, the vessel, this is a much bigger vein that collapses and the vessel just stays. So this is an expanded lymphatic vessel that for us, it means that there is a lymph flow inside. So when it will be cut during the surgery, there will be flow going outside and after the mastomosis, this is a lymph, this is a vessel that we bring out lymph from the affected limb. This is another video to show the um, modification of the lymph flow with the valve functioning, the lymphatic valve I mean. You see now you have the lymphatic vessel when the valve opens, it expands. This is a super functional lymphatic vessel. <coughs> this is the last paper I'm showing and 
um, is a proof of concept of concept study that we um, performed with the same group of Tokyo and in which we tried to get um, intraoperative pictures of lymphatic vessels for the first time by um, putting the probe directly in contact with the lymphatic vessel that was soaked in saline. Of course, a fully dissected lymphatic vessel. And from the um, images we got, we saw that there, are, there were too many findings. And we divided the lymphatic vessels directly observed with the probe in two main kinds that are the type one, that is the lymphatic vessel that appear to be has a round, uh, of a round hypochoic texture with a small, bright, echogenic texture around in the sagittal axis. And you can clearly see the lumen and the wall. And on the axial axis, you can clearly see the lumen and the wall and the valves. This is, this is associated to an infective vessel that by direct observation under the microscope is an infective vessel that is transparent, uh, expanded, and that will um, flow out lymph when cut it. The type two are lymphatic vessels that uh, appear as um, um, hesochoic round shape. You cannot see the lumen in the um, sagittal section nor in the axial section. And this is the echographic exp uh, expression of the um, of the sclerotic lymphatic vessels that of course will not lead to a therapeutic effect when used for LVAs. So ultra high frequency ultrasound, as I told at the beginning, gave us unprecedentedly clear images of lymphatic vessels, al allowing us to see lymphatic vessels smaller than 0.3 millimeter. That was almost impossible before. And we got an instrument to assess the functional status of the lymphatic vessels. That was something that was not possible before the introduction of this exam. This is a video to show you the setting in which we perform how to make it, to show you the setting in which we perform these evaluations. And you see that by moving the hand through the skin of the leg, in the lymphatic vessel is expanding time by time. Just to make you understand how is the setting in which we do this. This is another confirmation of that a lymphatic vessel is functional or not functional. This is a functional one. A similar video from a surgical point of view, but it's the same. So thank you.